Okay, so I've got my jelly plate print and I'm just going to be using this paper. It's this one, um, ivory coloured illustration board mixed media paper. So I think it will be all right. I'm a bit like slapdash with paper to be honest. So the first thing you do is just put a few little blobs down of colour, not too much. Oh, the other thing is I've left, because this um, surface is really rough, this workbench, I've left um, this clear plastic underneath the jelly plate print just to protect it a bit because I don't want, um, I don't want it to get scratched. So I've got kind of like a peach colour and a skin colour. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this. This is um, acrylic medium. So it's just going to make the paint a little bit, um, switch right up. It's going to make the paint a little bit runnier. So I'll just put a little bit of that down. And it really is as simple as that. Just covering the plate. I wouldn't overwork it too much because then the colours all bleed into each other. Some people brayer on, oh, and when you put your brayer down, make sure that you put the bottom resting like that. Some people, um, some people brayer the back, but then it gets all painty and you get paint everywhere. So. So press down really nice and firm and then you just pull it off and get a print. So it hasn't made contact with the whole piece of paper, but that doesn't bother me at all. I just think each one's unique as I was, as I said in my warm up and um, yeah, don't worry about it. So then there's quite a bit more paint here. So I'm going to go across this way now the same colors because I want to make sure that um, I use up every little bit of paint And yeah, so that one's got a bit more coverage, but it's like a really kind of dreamy, glassy look, which is really pretty, I think. So then I might look at that and go, okay, what's another color that might be nice over the top? I might use this soft yellow color. It's called Yellow Petal. Ooh, that's probably a bit too much. But you can see how you can just keep going and going and going. So now I'm going to kind of paint with the brayer a bit and make some shapes. And that looks really pretty. I mean, these could be beautiful pieces of abstract art in their own right. They don't necessarily have to be, I often use them to collage with, or sometimes I draw on top of them, but um, there's just so much you can do with them. It's such a like quick and easy way of getting um, a really nice texture. So in this one, I blurred the colors a little bit more. Oh, I really like that one. That's gorgeous. See, I, almost, I would almost just leave that as it is. I don't know, just a simple line drawing. There's just a really beautiful way of creating nice kind of like backdrops for artwork. 
I love that one. That one's probably my favorite so far. So now my plate is like pretty cleared of paper. This is another good opportunity. So I think at the start, I mentioned about, um, I can't find my journal. If you have an art journal, you can actually just, I'll use this one. You can actually just, um, this is another altered book that I've made. So that's another really great art process that goes really great with um, jelly plate printing. So look, even though I haven't gessoed this front page, you could just even use it to pick up that paint. Well, it hasn't really picked it up that well, but that's okay. I mean, that's kind of part of it. <laughs> that was a failure. Don't worry about that. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to show you was how to use stencils. So I've got these really pretty leaves. I really like the shape of them. And the other thing I like about them is the leaves are really soft. So I don't want this plate getting um, scratched because then the scratch will be in there forever type thing. I'm just going to put them on like that. Now there's a few different ways that you can, um, I might use a nice green for this. And then I'm just adding a bit of this. So this, all this really does is it kind of thins down that acrylic paint so it rolls a bit better now when you do have a stencil you kind of have to go a bit slower around the edges so just keep in mind that um they might shift a bit and the other thing is i have not oh i haven't worked with this type of leaf before so i don't totally know how it's gonna go but that's okay I'll just see how it goes. Whoops. But I can see already, it's gonna kind of make an abstracty type leaf shape. Not necessarily. Now the brayer is not getting in around that leaf, but that's okay, so it's gonna be like a, but I think this leaf edging will be really nice. Okay. So I think that will do. Um, the other thing is, because it's kind of painty, you might want to grab a scrap piece of paper to put your stencils on if you don't want to get paint everywhere. Okay, so, so they're not totally leaf-like, but they're kind of a shape. So you could even go in afterwards and draw... A bit more of a botanical drawing of those leaves. There's so many things you could do. So I've just done this on a background. Okay, so that really doesn't look like a leaf at all, but that's okay. That's the, the other thing I really like about this is there's absolutely no wrong. So what I'm going to do now is because that didn't work so well, I've got this green that I did. On another occasion and I'm just gonna try because I really like this leaf shape and I think it's still worth pursuing so what I'm gonna do I'm going to get this really nice turquoise color and I'm going to you could do a beautiful mandala with this as well I'm just going to try and capture some of the, the leaf edge shape. Okay, so that's a bit more promising. I'll just see. And I'm just going to spread out from there. And the other thing is, I'm going to grab this string. I'm just going to use it, put it there, so it's going to act as a kind of a resist. So I 
actually I might make a bit of a pattern with it. So who knows what this will look like, right? That's every single time I make a print is that's part of the excitement. Like when you pull it off, you just don't know what it's gonna be like. <gasps> wow, I really like it. So that's my leaf shape and that's where the string was. So see how it's quite kind of, it's made quite a chunky line because I haven't pressed down really hard on the paper. So I think that is really good. So definitely more string. Ooh, and then look at that. That's really interesting. It's made another type of print there. So I'm going to take a print of that. So, I mean, I guess the key is if you work with colours that you really, really like, which I tend to have the same type of colour palette, it's always going to look nice. Okay, so let's see how this one looks. Ooh. Okay, so that's quite nice, that line. So as you make pieces, you'll start to realise, oh, you know, like, okay, that bit worked really well. The leaf bit did not work so well, but I really like that string. So I might just do a whole other page of string. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Oh, I haven't done this one yet either. So the paper works pretty well. What I might do is I'll put some blue down. A bit of the medium. So I always like to get as much paint off as I can. So I'm just going to put a, just the one colour down, which I don't really do that often to be honest, but I'm going to do it in this case. And then I'm going to put these raindrops down. I'm going to have some going off the page. Because there's a good amount of paint, they're really going to um, stick and make a bit of contact. And I think this pink would look really pretty. Yeah, so greeting cards, um, postcards, any type of cardboard that's really nice and thick is great for using the templates with and yeah oh you can tell that I've put a lot of paint on so it's a little bit blurry but I still quite like it I still think it can be quite nice so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel them off actually what I might do because that one was very thick so sometimes if you take a print and you like it, but it's really, really thick. Take another one. Because that will be like a softer version. And then I'm just going to go around the shapes edges a bit more too. Ooh. So that I love. I really, really like that. So you can see the difference between that one had a lot of paint. I don't think that one was quite as successful. And that one's a bit softer with less paint. Okay, so I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to take this off. Ooh. So the other thing you can do, because these have sucked up all the paint that was underneath, so you really can just keep going and going. You don't actually have to have any type of like... It's probably better. The less you think about it, the better it is. That's my favourite type of, type of art making. So you can see the paint that was on the background is now on these little shapes. 
And then I'm going to grab my string. I'm just going to put it on top because I really quite liked how that looked. And I'm not even going to really worry about how it goes. Um, and I've got this blue one here. I might work with this one. I can feel that it's shifted a bit, but that's okay. Hmm. So that really did not do much at all. <laughs> but that is part of it. So obviously this, maybe it was because I had this string on. We'll see. I might just try one more time. So it really is a lot of trial and error. Let's try again. So that paint, because I had this string on, it might have stopped this paper from really contacting I think the more you try it, the more you'll see which um, which materials work work well. Hmm. No, still didn't make contact. So that's because the paint on here has dried. So, with that said, I might leave leave on that note. And definitely use up as much paint as you can on your plate and then you clean it with hot soapy water and then I'll be showing you things that you can do with your jelly plate print art um, ways you can go over the top of it with other materials okay I hope that was demystified the process and hopefully you just give it a go and have fun with it okay bye